Our story today begins with a scam email like this one, and another like this one, then more, many, many more, all following similar patterns of offering me untold, unexpected and quite undeserved riches. Advance fee scams via email are still alive and well in 2020, so let's have a little fun with these scammers. Scam baiting time again. Now we're going to be communicating with a few dozen assorted scammers in this session and often jumping from one to another. My advice to you is don't try too hard to keep track of who is whom, because I didn't. I'll try to keep conversations in thread where I can, but let's just go with the flow. So David McKay from the Federal Reserve Bank, or the Royal Bank of Canada, it doesn't seem to matter, contacted me with this story. Attention, customer, sum of $4 million. Sequel to the delays and encumbrances relating to the release of your deposited winning prize from Coca-Cola Company contest, total sum of $4 million from this bank, we wish to notify you that your payment has been approved and forwarded to our corresponding banker centre, Federal Reserve Bank USA, for final remittance to your bank account today. We did transfer the funds directly into your bank account, but due to the President Donald Trump's new method of financial obligations, he gave an instruction that any funds above $1 million United States dollars will be transferred to the correspondent bank in USA required FDIC insurance coverage, but your failure to come up with the needed fee, your fund was placed on hold by FDIC and deposited into Federal Reserve Bank USA. I replied, I don't drink Coca-Cola. Can I get the same prize from Pepsi? Then I copied his email address and saved it in a text file. Next up, General Elizabeth Hoisington wrote to me to say, I sincerely apologise for intruding into your privacy. This might come as a surprise to you, but nothing is more distressing to me at this time as I find myself forced by events beyond my control. I have summoned courage to contact you. I am 45 years old lady, am a widow, and I had a son who is now 16 years of age. Some money in various currencies were discovered in barrels at a farmhouse in the Middle East during a rescue operation in Iraq war and it was agreed by Staff Sergeant Kenneth Buff and myself that some part of these money be shared between both of us. I was given a total of five million US dollars as my own share. I kept this money in a consignment for a long while with a security company, which I declared and deposit as my personal effects, and it's been secured and protected for years now with the diplomatic delivery service. Now the war in Iraq is over, and all possible problems that could have emanated from the shared money has been totally cleaned up, and all file closed, and so on and so on. Ah yes, the war riches story. The old ones are the good ones. I replied, the war is never over, Elizabeth. Copied the email address and added it to my file. Shirley Fosgate emailed me with a story about her rich late husband had died very quickly and left her with too many million dollars. And what with her own impending death, perhaps I could help in distributing the money to charity. I replied, okay, Shirley, what do you need me to do? By the way, I'm sorry to hear about your husband. The four day death disease is something I've heard of before and it's no laughing matter. Oh, and I copied her email address and saved it in my list. Dr. Patrick J. Burke wrote to me about confirmation of my payment of $17.5, hardly worth the effort. Oh, no, wait, it's $17.5 million. And all I needed to do was send in my personal information. You know, the kind of stuff you should never share with a stranger on the internet. This time the scammer actually wanted my login credentials for my email account. I replied, I don't understand what this is about. I've not ordered any shipment. And then I added his email to the list. By this time, Federal Reserve Bank, who'd offered me the Coca-Cola prize money, had replied, asking, no, wait saying, so have you receive it? I said, no, I don't know what it is. They said, it is your fund. That is the fund that was transferred here in Federal Reserve to transfer to you. The fund are with me to transfer to you, as I told you at the first email. I said, oh, okay. They said, yes, so how do you want to receive it? I said, yes, please, I definitely would like to receive it. They tried to explain all over again that this was about $4 million of funds. I left it there for a moment because while that had all been happening, I'd also been busy with some other scammers. Universal Credit Finance contacted me, a complete stranger, to offer me a loan. I asked, is this a credible loan offer? They said, we are offering loan on express at this present world pandemic to AIDS finance assistant to people in needs. Thank you for choosing our services. I said, understood. Is it a credible loan, though? They said, yes. I added them to the list. Meanwhile, Billy Carmen also wanted to offer me a loan to improve my business or standard of living. I asked, is this a credible loan? Billy said, yes, the loan is absolutely credible. I asked, in what way? Billy asked, do you truly need the loan? I replied, and now copying in all of my scammers on the list, numbering 20, some of which I haven't introduced to you yet. Honestly, Billy, I'm not so sure now because I just received an amazing email about a deal where I will be presented as the legal heir of some dead millionaire. So I think financial worries are about to become a thing of the past for me. Let's just jump back a bit and see some of those other scammers as they joined. 
Stefano Pessina had emailed me to say, I am Stefano Pessina. I am Italian Monegasque billionaire businessman and the vice chairman, chief executive officer, CEO, and the largest single shareholder of Walgreens Boots Alliance. Because that's obviously what billionaires do, right? They email complete strangers saying, hello, I'm a billionaire. Of course. Anyway, Stefano had only offered me one congratulation and one regard, so I put him straight on the list. But I did take my time to say, that's pretty amazing. Wow, what next? And he wrote back with one of those standard scam templates, assuring me not to be bothered why I've been contacted for this donation, as he had done so from pure motive, telling me again that he's a billionaire, because what's the point of being a billionaire if you aren't even going to keep saying I'm a billionaire? And asking for my personal details, you know, the sort of personal details you should never share with a stranger on the internet. Meanwhile, Smith Jonathan, whose email address was actually Paul Martin's, and some numbers I'm not going to show you, wrote to say, Parent Directory, I understand you may be occupied, and I'm not sure if the email I sent before this made it through to you. I would greatly appreciate a reply to this email if received. Have a great day. I replied, are you Smith Jonathan or Paul Martins? He responded with the very familiar story about trying to embezzle the estate of a late client, but at least he confirmed his name as Mr. Smith Jonathan. I said, dear Smith, thank you. What do I need to do next? And I added him to the list. And so it went on. Roy Peterson had a project of 4.5 million for me and asked me to email back on how to proceed. I said, I am a qualified Prince2 project manager. I think I can help. Roy immediately responded with a story about how he was rich, dying from something called blood cancel, and wanted some stranger to whom he could donate his fortune for purely charitable purposes. All pretty standard. see it's a microscope yeah very funny now tell me what you see on the slide it looks like blood cancel is that even a thing check again yep it's blood cancel all right not like this not in my blood hospital gary get me a second opinion <laughs> what this blood has been cancelled dear lord activate containment deploy the isolation bag stop Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! So I replied, that sounds like a fairly compelling business case. I shall start work on the project initiation documentation immediately. Please could you provide details of any other major stakeholders besides Pastor Roland and their roles within the project? And then I added him to my list. Mr. Candy Wapa Thomas, or maybe it was Mr. Temba Mbali, emailed me about $8.5 million in an escrow account, which was apparently due to me. And he went straight in at the request for personal details. Clearly a man of action, whoever he is. I just sent a confused sounding reply and added him to the list. Brian Moynihan, CEO of Bank of America, emailed me to say, now I'm going to read this email in full because, you know, this is the CEO of a major bank, a VIP, and we should listen to his insight and wisdom about the business and banking world. Your details information has been received and confirmed with what we have in our database. Before we proceed to set up your Bank of America personal residential online account, we want to bring to your notice the simple procedure to achieve this aim with our bank under my supervision. First and foremost, the origin of funds has previously advised in my initial email was from the United Nations Organization on Unpaid Payments from Deposit Funds in Africa, Asia and Eastern Europe. Your name and contact information was retrieved from the shortlisted data on the file of the United Nations Organization. If you try to recollect, you would remember conducted some business in either of the mentioned three-tier regions, Africa, Asia and Eastern Europe, and the purpose of selection was randomly made by the United Nations Organization. Our bank stands out from the presently distressed banks in the United States and Northern America to enable the payment of your overdue transaction that has been pending for the past several years released. I want you to clearly understand that I am here to serve you according to the instruction from FBI, Homeland Security of States and United Nations Organization in particular. Moreover, I am not here to play any kind of joke with you. The clearances from Federal Reserve Bank and US Treasury Department to enable your online transfer go smoothly has been issued to our bank. Meanwhile, you have to clearly understand that. Before we can set up a new Bank of America personal residential online account for you here in our bank, the activation fee must be paid by you, and it will reflect in our database and your original account which was instructed from United Nation will be activated. You have to send the sum of $100 Google Play or Steam Wallet card or iTunes Play card to activate your Bank of America personal residential online account. This payment will be credited to your online account before we can fully remit the amount of $12 million United States dollars. This is why it's important that we receive all Bank of America personal residential online account activation fee in our bank. 
which in turn would record and file the payment of $100 Google Play or Steam Wallet card and forward the information to our headquarters here in USA. The funds would be received, in turn registered into the system, and once it is cited, then an instruction would be issued out to that effect and the documentation would be formally presented to Federal Reserve Bank, just as described in my most recent correspondence with you explaining. Please, if you cannot afford to pay this $100 Google Play or Steam Wallet card, don't reply to my email. We don't have time to beg you to set up Bank of America Personal Residential Online under our supervision. Once you buy the $100 USD dollars Google Play or Steam Wallet card, make sure you send the copy of the $100 USD dollars Google Play or Steam Wallet card here in our mail address, OK. Regards, Mr. Brian Moynihan, text SMS massage. Yes, that does sound exactly like the words of the CEO of one of the world's largest banks transacting directly with strangers using iTunes cards. I said, OK, and added him to the list. OK, so at this point, the list was big enough that I thought we could start having some fun with it. So from here on, I did two things. One, any new scam email was added to the list. And when I replied the first time, I just blind copied the rest of the list to annoy them. Two, any other reply or message, I open copied my reply to the whole list to confuse and annoy them. So I sent a reply to Brian Moynihan's email, copying the whole list, saying, I am confused about which one of you I should contact to continue this conversation, as you've all emailed me on seemingly quite similar matters. Please click reply all when responding so we can sort this out. Stefano Pessino, who by now had forgotten how to spell his own name, was the first to reply. I got your email, and you don't have to forward me the message you received from another people, and you should follow your heart. You can contact them and ignored my message. And let me, let me give the donation to someone else. Kindly follow your heart. Thank you. Well, that's nice. So I replied, not sure, but my heart tells me that all these kind people should be included in our conversation. Federal Reserve Bank, however, thought they could steer the whole thing into their net and replied, note, you should should contact here to continue this conversation. I replied, copying the whole group. OK, what about the other context, though? Ban James, you know Ban James, wrote to tell me about a compensation fund amounting to a paltry $200,000. I don't get out of bed for that sort of a scam. So I replied, copying the list, sounds pretty cool, but I think one of these other lads has it covered. Another one came in, asking me to contact Lucy Tamlin, ambassador to the Benin Republic, about 1.6 million compensation for something apparently scamming. I replied, CC the list, oh, hi Lucy, sure, I've heard about this someplace else too. Another one came in, looking like weird beat poetry, asking me to contact Obodo Michael, about transferring those fund. You know, those fund. Oh, hi guys. Working from Home Shrimp here and I just had a brilliant idea. So I thought I'd dial in and tell you about it. If you want to see this email turned into a beat poem and you want to see Eric Castelia perform it, my buddy Eric Castelia, head off over to his channel, this link here, and comment on one of his videos to say, make a beat poem, please. And maybe we can make him do it. So head off to his channel, request beat poetry and subscribe over there. And maybe you'll see it happen. I replied to everyone saying, OK, that's great. Abodo Michael said, Bello, you are sending me email, but I did not understand what you are telling me. I replied to all, asking, this was a different thing? It seemed to be the same thing. He said, let me have your number so that we can talk. I said, OK, are we all going to talk? It might be easy to use Zoom or something. A new scammer entered the game, calling himself Paul Ike. Actually, I get this one a lot, claiming that Sophia Brown was trying to claim my fortune. You know Sophia Brown. She's the middle of three sisters. Sophie, Sophia... Sophiest. Anyway, I replied to Paul and the group. Hi, Paul. What a delight it is to hear from you again. How can I help? Federal Reserve Bank replied, I don't understand you. Who do you call Paul? I replied to the group. I was talking to Paul Ike. I thought it might be useful to copy you in. Do you know Paul? At this point, the scammers were still coming thick and fast. Loveth Loboso joined the group by emailing me about being an orphan, trying to reclaim her inheritance and in search of a reliable person. Well, I am indeed a reliable person. Look at me, I'm doing the same thing over and over here, like clockwork. I added her to the list and welcomed her. Rose Johnson emailed me about my consignment box. You know, the one at Miami airport. Then Ruth Harper contacted me to say that she was dying. Herself, a wealthy widow of a wealthy husband who died two years ago. And how she wanted to give me $35 million for some reason. At this point, I have to say I noticed a pattern emerging. So I replied to Ruth and now a group of 26 other scammers. I'm deeply concerned about your plight. It seems there must be some awful connection between being wealthy, being a widow, and then a diagnosis of cancer. I mentioned this because only the other day Roy Peterson contacted me regarding a donation of 4.5 million, and he finds himself in a very similar situation to your own, having been struck down by, well, blood cancer and a stroke, after losing his wife and son in a car accident. 
Furthermore, there was Shirley Fosgate, whose wealthy husband was a director at a construction company until his sudden death. Shirley is now suffering from pancreatic cancer, which has been diagnosed as really bad. Shirley wants to hand 5.2 million over to me. Then there's also Christina Schwalen, widow of a wealthy engineer with a terminal prognosis of cancer with 3.5 million. You see the pattern here? I believe in cause and effect, and from my point of view, the plural of these anecdotes is data. Correlation equals causation. If I were to accept this money, I would become wealthy. From there, it's a slippery slope to my own sudden death, leaving my wife as a widow with, frankly, a poor health outlook. Do you see the problem? It's a clear and undeniable case of post hoc ergo propter hoc. I've copied Roy, Shirley and Christina in on this reply, along with all other concerned parties. Please click reply all to discuss. To which Obodo Michael replied, let talk on phone and let me have your number. Except he only replied to me, and that's not going to get things done. So I replied to him and the group. OK, can we agree on a time that suits all of the respondents here? How's Monday looking for you guys? Meanwhile, Ruth Harper's supposed barrister was emailing me to try to progress the scam in very much the normal way, so I won't read all of this. But I did reply, of course to the whole group, to say, see, this is what I'm talking about. When you get wealthy, you die. And then your widow will get some horrible terminal disease and give all your money away. This money is cursed, I'm sure of it. And the scammers just kept coming. Mr. Louis Pinto wanted to help me reclaim some money I was apparently scammed out of. Webmail login update shouted at me about how my email account was selected for donation of three and a half million dollars because that happens. David Mark, two first names, wanted me to contact the Honourable Mr. Harry John about a cashier's check. I said, Are you related to Harry Mike Riddering? Small world. Robert Roy wanted me to contact Frank Dominic about a check to the tune of nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars, which he had raised with a sincere heart. Dr. Gray Ransom emailed me in Spanish, and even without translating, you can tell it's a standard scam email. I said, Okay. Then he was kind enough to send the same email in English, so I said, No hablo español. Abodo Michael now replied, Please, I did not understand all this your email you are forwarding to me. Please, can you email me without all these emails, so that I will know what you're talking about, or let's talk on phone. I said, You're part of something much, much bigger now, Mr. Michael. Ecobank said, Get back to me once you send the money. I replied, OK, will do, copying the rest of the group for their information. Mr. Diplomatic Young Martin said he was still waiting for me at Miami airport and said I will be poised because I lose your address. He seemed to be in some distress or maybe having trouble with his shouty caps lock, so I replied, God bless you too, Diplomatic Mr. Young Martins. One of these other people will take care of it for me. They are very committed to making sure I get my money. Every one of them has promised something like that. Lucy Tamlin replied, Stop sending this trash to me. Why can't you stop? I replied, I don't know what you mean, Lucy. You made this happen, not me. She said, do not send anything again to me. What language did you not understand? Are you deaf? I replied, Lucy, there's no need to be rude. My hearing's actually in very good order. However, when I tried to listen to your email, all I could hear was the fan inside my computer. Another scammer joined, Dr. Tracy William, who apparently wanted to make me her special friend. I replied, hi, Tracy, wonderful to hear from you. Before we become special friends, I wonder if you could answer a few preliminary questions. Are you the widow of a wealthy businessman or engineer? If so, are you suffering from a terminal disease? Are you a banker who's discovered an unclaimed fortune stashed in a forgotten account? Do you have my consignment box of gold bars clearing customs? Do you know anything about my compensation award from a government body relating to a previous scam attempt? Are you a soldier in the US Army looking forward to returning home and forming an intimate relationship with someone who is at present a complete stranger to you? Lucy Tamlin, who I had not stopped copying in on all of these conversations, now said in shouty caps, Do you want me to course you and your entire generation? Try it again and send anything to me and see. I replied, to all. Hi Lucy, the caps lock key is usually the one at the left side of the keyboard. You might have accidentally activated it. What sort of course do you have in mind? I've often thought of taking up pottery or perhaps rug making. More scammers joined the list by emailing me. Kathy Palmer, wait, no, Louis Pinto again, but with a different email address. Mr. Wright Anderson, who wanted me to take a 45% share of, wait, $18,500 million? $18.5 billion? Maybe this one isn't a scam. What do you think? Edward Carlos emailed me about an irrevocable payment order, coming to me because I share the same surnames as his late client, Mr. Wilson Tree, who died interstate. He was quite emphatic in saying, be rest assured, your payment is now 100% guaranteed and further advised to stop any further communications with every other persons, groups, institutions, financial outlets and agents as they highly contributed delays to your funds. I replied, you know, to the whole group, now numbering 34 scammers. I am sorry to hear about the death of Mr. Wilson Tree on the interstate. Road traffic fatalities are a cruel necessity of the modern world, so I suppose we should do everything in our power to promote them. It is the necessary price of progress. 
You mentioned something about stopping communications with other persons and groups. This may be difficult for a number of reasons, none of which are very important. More scammers joined. Diplomatic agent Mr Mike Brown emailing me about another consignment box and wanting payment in iTunes cards. Bobby William, an investment consultant who wanted to improve my life in some unspecified way, but I'm betting it involves millions of US dollars. John Tan, or maybe Michael Morgan, about concluding my fund claim. John Tan actually replied to warn me that there's so much fraud in the system. I replied to say, I'm distressed to hear there's fraud in the system. Is this a safe channel of communication? I'm scared there might be some criminal listening in. I mean, actually, there were now 39 criminals listening in because I copied them all into the email. Stefano Pacino, one of the first scammers on the list, had now had enough of all of these copies and said, Plus, stop sending me message. Do not send me any message. Bye. I don't like plus as an abbreviation. If you're going to say please, make the effort to say please. So I made this clear. This didn't seem to work, and Stefano just replied, Plus, stop sending me message unless you want me to report you. Don't ever send me message again, please. I said, of course, copying everyone. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Another scammer joined the list, Ms. Navi Pile, offering me scam victim compensation from the UN, apparently. Now, from time to time, on a journey such as this one, things get a little bit quiet and you have to do something to reignite the spark. We'll look at what I did for that after this short break to answer one of your frequently asked questions. Today's question is, surely if the scammer wants payment in Steam gift cards, they must be kids, probably gamers, right? Well, that's possible, of course, but there's almost no bar to entry for this kind of internet criminality, so a scammer could be almost anyone. But I would say just because they ask for Steam or iTunes or Google Play gift cards, it doesn't necessarily mean they want to play games or buy music or apps. They actually want money, and it turns out gift cards are a tremendously easy way to transfer money, almost untraceably. If someone wants you to put money in their bank, they have to reveal their bank account to you. If they ask you for the numbers from a gift card, they can just resell that gift card on some online marketplace, often for face value, sometimes even slightly above face value. Gift cards are just money, and they are one of the favourite exchange methods for criminals of all kinds, regardless of their age or whether they play games in their spare time. Anyway, so as I said, sometimes the scammers go quiet on a long project like this one and need a little pick-me-up, so I sent them all a gentle reminder. Oh, and I titled the email, Here is the MTCN. Billy Carmen took the bait and asked, Where is the MTCN? I replied to the group, There is no MTCN, obviously. I'm not going to send you money. But that got your attention. A brand new scammer entered the chat, and this one had such a lovely and utterly implausible scam scenario that I want to read it to you in full. Here it goes. I am Mr Roy Adams, the software system engineer with the remittance department of CIBC, First Caribbean Bank, Grand Cayman Island. I came across your file diskette, which was marked X, and your release disk painted red. I took time to study it and found out that some top directors of this bank are interested in your money because it is a large amount. In fact, they have planned to frustrate all your good efforts so that they will be able to divert your fund. I carefully studied your release disc and found out my bank's director in charge of administrative duties and two other directors of this bank are interested in your money and they're ready to do everything possible to get you out of the picture so that they will divert your fund into their pockets. Their plan is to frustrate your fund release so that you will abandon your money, thereby giving them the chance to divert your money for themselves. The most painful part of this is these people do not have the fear of God in them. I will help you get your fund, but you must work with me discreetly as I cannot expose them because of the fact they are top officials of this bank. All I need for you is to buy two special bank hard disks called the HD212 gig. Once you send me the money to buy these two new hard disks, I will buy them. Then I will download your fund transfer coordinates into the two new hard disks, after which I will slot them into our remittance motherboard system and trigger the transfer to hit any bank account you provide. Note that it's very important for you to furnish me with your bank account details where you want this money wired into by bank-to-bank fund transfer. Once the two new hard disks is purchased by you, I will use them to be transferring the sum of 5 million first to your nominated bank account. And once this first 5 million is received by you, then I will be transferring your fund in batches of 5 million for each wire transfer until your fund is fully remitted into your nominated bank account. Once this is done, I will appreciate any amount of money you will give me for helping you as soon as the fund is confirmed in your nominated bank account, and not before. I believe that you will surely reward me once your money is in your custody. Finally, please do not reveal all I have told you to anyone, because nobody is totally unaware of this plan by my directors of my bank to divert your fund. If you reveal what I have told you to anyone then you have exposed my plan to help you, and I cannot help you again. All I need from you is to buy the required two new special HD212 gig bank hard disks. Once I hear from you, I'll tell you how much it will cost to buy these required bank hard disks and how you will send me the money to buy them. The money for the purchase of these required bank disks will be the only money that you will ever have to send, because once I buy the hard disks, I will use them for the bank-to-bank wire transfer of your fund. I cannot come back tomorrow and ask you for more money once you've sent the money for the hard disks, because that will make me a scammer. By the time your fund is successfully transferred into your nominated bank account, then all the people planning to divert your fund will be exposed and the devil will put them to shame, which will be a great victory for me as a Christian. Waiting for your immediate reply. 
Well, what an epic roller coaster of a scam. Discs, red paint, bank hard discs, and the remittance motherboard. Pain, secrecy, God, and the devil. And the clear assurance that this is not a scammer. I have never heard of any such thing before, and I said so. Then I realised I'd forgotten to copy in the whole list, so I remedied that in a follow-up email to say, sorry, I forgot to ask you the price of these discs. I didn't know this is how banks worked. This is really fascinating. He said, everything about this transaction is 100% genuine. The total amount contained in your file diskette, which is marked X, is $37 million, which includes interest, so please take note, I will transfer the amount to your nominated bank by electronic bank to bank wire transfer. I know that a lot of people are telling you you have a different amount, but the sum of $37 million is what I will wire into your nominated bank account once you provide me with what I need. I will be brief because of the time, and need to be discreet about this until your fund is safely in your nominated bank account. God is my witness to the fact that if you follow my sincere advice, your fund be digitally transferred by me and will surely hit your nominated bank account in 72 banking hours from the time of remittance. As a remittance system software engineer with our bank, I have already worked out the modalities of your fund remittance, which I will personally program and trigger using the required two new HD212 gig hard disks. And so he went on and on about these HD212 gig hard disks and the details of his scam. Further on he said, considering the fact that each of the two required HD212 gig hard disk is sold for $550, the two required disks will cost $1,100. If you send the $1,100 money for the purchase of the required two new hard disks, then I will surely use it to transfer your overdue fund by electronic bank-to-bank -bank wire transfer. And so on, and so forth. I said, wow, that's a lot of money for two disks, especially only 212 gig capacity. I recently bought a 2 terabyte USB stick from Wish for only $11, and it was prefect and real capacity. I checked in the properties, so it must be real. I even formatted it, and that proves it was really two terabytes. Maybe you could use one of those, and the financial data would all fit in one of them. With plenty of spare capacity for photos, documents, games, etc. Here's a link to the product. But that wasn't any good for Roy. He said, first and foremost, I want you to know that you or your company cannot buy the required HD212 gig special bank hard disks because it is solely used by banks, and it is sold to banks accredited software dealers. Because of my very sensitive position here in our bank, as the software system engineer, with the remittance department of our bank, and because of my offer to help you, I cannot purchase the two new special HD212 gig bank hard disks. It is your duty as the beneficiary to buy them by sending the money for the purchase of these two required HD212 gig special bank hard disks to the salesperson of the bank accredited software dealer. Note that in accordance with Section 6, Subsection 2, Paragraph 9 of our banking law, all of the bank officials involved in foreign fund transfers must use their personal email accounts so that it will be easy to trace anybody who violates the laws of our bank. If you work with me, then I will transfer the $37 million contained in the file diskette, which was marked X, and your release disk painted red. And so on, and so forth. Fascinating. I said to the whole group, Sorry, it was just an idea I thought might help. I'm quite unfamiliar with the idea of having to buy IT equipment for a bank that's looking after my money. Normally I'd expect them to fund their own equipment, if you know what I mean. I did have another idea though. Maybe you could just buy one of these HD212 gig special bank hard disks and use it to transfer half the money first. Then, when the money's transferred, use the same disk to transfer the other half. Would that work? To my slight surprise, one of the other scammers, the one pretending to be Ecobank, replied to this email saying, Yes! So I said, excellent news. Perhaps you would be kind enough to work with Roy Adams to resolve this. Yet more scammers joined. Mr. Larry Johnson wanted me to contact Hill Ager about a compensation fund. Idris Bello, or maybe Ahmed Idris, emailed me to ask whether or not I was dead, because if I was not dead, Mr. Rick Jones might have held a funeral for me in a fraudulent attempt to get my funds. David Mark, two first names, a name we saw earlier, emailed in with a copy of a similar scam from a new mailbox. Maybe a different scammer using the same script, or maybe the same scammer with a new mailbox. I don't know. Maybe he was receiving too many irrelevant emails on his old mailbox. Kelvin Lambert emailed to say he wanted to help his dying philanthropist client give me money. Mary Wilson of MoneyGram apparently has my compensation payment of $6.5 million. Have we seen Mary Wilson already? At this point, I was losing track myself of who was a new or existing scammer, so I replied, yes. Don't worry about it. One of your other colleagues has already been in touch with me regarding this matter, and I've paid the fee. Mary asked how much I'd paid, so I confirmed to everyone. It was the full amount. Kelvin Lambert now came back to say, you've been dealing with scammers, hence I'm not comfortable to deal with you to avoid losing my fund to these imposters. Well, actually, Kelvin, how is it a scam? They said it was 100% legitimate and risk-free. Kelvin explained that unlike all these scammers, he was different because he would provide me with his ID. And when I paid the financial consultancy fee, this would release my fund. See? Totally different. And if I was ready to work with an open heart, he was fully prepared for it. Well, I asked the group. That sounds quite a lot like what some of the other people said, which you've informed me is a scam. I wonder what conclusion we should draw from this similarity. What do you think, folks? Should I trust Kelvin with an open heart? I await your advice. Meanwhile, Donald Obosio joined the group, asking if I'd received the message he'd sent. I said, honestly, 
It's hard to tell if I received your message or not. I receive a lot of messages. Was it about the bank balance of a deceased customer, or was it about a rich dying widow? Moneygram Remittance tried to leap in and answer for him, though, saying, You have to reconfirm your details, please. Yes, it's because of the rich widow. So I replied to all, saying, Understood. OK, please liaise with one of these other people. Just click Reply All. I think one of them's dealing with it. Stefano Pessina complained, How many times have I told you not to forward me any message? Please stop forwarding me, fools. I said, At least once more. A new scammer joined, Mr Fred from the Royal Bank with a sincere and humble heart about a deceased estate that we could embezzle and get rich together. The title and first line of his email was Dear Good Day. Well, we know what happens when you write that. I replied, I'm not sure I can help you as my name is not Good Day. Moneygram Remittance shouted, You should stop sending this rubbish to our office email again. I replied to the whole group, Should I though? I feel quite at peace with the decision to do this. Why do you think I should stop? One of the other scammers also shouted, Kindly remove me from your list. I replied to the group, I'm disinclined to acquiesce to your request. I do appreciate that you asked nicely, though. Mr Fred said, send me your WhatsApp mobile number. I replied, why? Also, no, but mostly, why? Kelvin seemed to be very confused. I mean, it is confusing, and sent me his WhatsApp number. Now, I didn't want to share that number with the group. I feel like that's a step too far. So I asked Kelvin, just Kelvin, if he wanted me to share his number with the group. He said, please stop writing to me if you're not serious. I told you that you're dealing with scammers. Imagine you asking for my WhatsApp and I sent it only for you to ask if you should share it with the group. Which nonsense group is that? God by. I said, of course I'm dealing with scammers. You're one of them. This is what I do. You're on the list now. You're staying on the list. And this is where we reach pretty much the end of our story for today. I was initially going to close this off completely, but on Afterthought, I did actually continue running this list and adding scammers after this point. And at the time of publishing this video, there are about 55 scammers on the list. A few of them did rage quit and close their email accounts as I started getting bounces. But at this point, I'm still adding more and emailing them all. So there might even be a sequel to this video sometime, maybe, if something interesting happens. So I hope that was fun. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.